World in Action has been banned from the former British colony of Guyana following our programme on its elections last month. On December 21st, I Guyana's Prime Minister, Mr Forbes Burnham, asking permission to make tonight's follow-up film there. We wanted guarantees of entry to the country and unimpeded movement. The answer, marked state priority, came in 24 hours. It was terse. Negative all requests. Mr. Burnham stonewalled us last month, too. What have I got to amplify? As Prime Minister, I say that I am satisfied that the electoral process was impartial. Guyana, a member of the Commonwealth in South America. At its December elections, the internal votes gave Mr. Burnham a tiny one-seat majority. Only with the crucial overseas vote did this rise to seven. World in Action was accused of mudslinging for challenging these overseas votes. Tonight, we further challenge Mr. Burnham's victory. We show the total of overseas votes was inflated. We show that many internal votes were fake. Mr. Burnham is now in London for the Commonwealth Prime Minister's Conference. We doubt he has the right to be there. Tonight, we investigate the making... National Congress. The leader of the a millionaire. They agreed to take part in the program together because they are both incensed at the way the election was run. They were amazed by the results. Mr. Dagar won four seats. Last time he won seven. Dr. Jagan won 19 seats. Last time he won 24. My party is a broad-based alliance which is anti-colonialist and anti-imperialist in content, guided by a theory of scientific socialism. It's a left-wing party? Of course. Yes, we've always been so and we will remain that way. I am basically a conservative. In other words, I believe not in the elimination of private property, but extending it so that as many people as possible own things. We have uh, also in Guyana, the makings of a Mr. Smith in Mr. Barnum, a Rhodesian Smith in reverse, so to speak. And uh, consequently, we feel that a case such as Guyana, where there's fraud, open fraud, that the Commonwealth Secretary should uh, concern itself about it. This is likely to be a future area of discontent and strife. I feel that I should have acted quicker, that I shouldn't have been so naive, that I should have seen what was going to happen. In my opinion, this was a plot which started on the very day Mr. Burnham became the Prime Minister, and it went on for these four or five years. And finally, the election itself, which was, I think, to call it an election is to give it a name it does not deserve. It was a seizure of power by fraud, not an election. I've got on my list a Barbara Curtis who gives this address as her address. I've never heard of a woman of that name. Uh, How long have you been here? About 15 years. Jamie's Battery. Bentley. No, I've never heard of him. I see. How long have you been living here? Well, 15 years now. In our first programme, we found hardly any Guyanese voters at all. We sent out teams of researchers to check a sample from the 40,000 names on the official lists of Guyanese voters living in Britain, the people who would be voting by post. In Britain, we checked 900 names and found few more than 120 genuine Guyanese voters. It was commonplace to find nothing at all. A voter called Gladys Foster was meant to live here in London. The house was demolished for the railway in 1874. Half the houses we checked in Manchester didn't exist. Lily and Olga Barton were said to live here, but the houses had gone long ago and two horses had moved in. Our survey, in fact, demolished the credibility of the British part of the Guyana election. The lists were largely faked. And Dr. Jaggan says our survey forced the Burnham government to think again. It is my definite view that because of the expose by Grenada of the UK overseas voters list, that the government of Guyana fell back to rig the elections at home in a very massive way. Other people were also suspicious of the UK voters' lists. An independent survey was commissioned by Peter Dagar. The moment I saw 42,000 people registered, 
Guyanese over the age of 20. Guyanese is just incredible. And I realized that it was wrong. So I set out to find, through an impartial organization, if my instinct was correct or not. And I was found that it was more correct than I had thought, because I thought there might have been 50% fraud, not 85%. The impartial organisation he went to was Opinion Research Centre in London, run by Humphrey Taylor. Obviously, I don't know what happened in Guyana, but so far as Britain is concerned, the compilation of the register was a totally dishonest and corrupt operation. Uh, and uh, as we have clearly established, the great majority of the people listed do not exist. Uh, this, I would think, is unprecedented from a, for a Commonwealth country, as far as I know. Um, and uh, it's um, you know, pretty awful and said. Solano Laku, QC, is Mr. Burnham's High Commissioner in London. In a statement after the programme, Solano said his office had acted merely as a post office in the election. Solano said his government had, in fact, provided the safeguards to foil any rigging. This morning, Solano delivered by hand to us a letter which at long last gave the official figure for Guyanese voting in Britain, 19,000. This is impossible. Our most generous estimate is 13,000. World in Action smuggled the registration lists for the voters in New York out of Guyana. We got the list because the second largest Guyanese community overseas lives here. The vast majority of all Guyanese overseas are in Britain and New York. And if we found the same sorry story in New York, fraud could be conclusively proved. We could find no 8 or 12 West 110th Street because there were no even numbers on this. Ral Chung and Jane Knight should live here, but this is the top end of Central Park. Oscar Hines should live at 792 Prospect Place, Brooklyn. He didn't. Instead, we found a butcher shop which had been boarded up for five years. I don't know Josephine Gum. I've been the caretaker of this building for five years, and I've never seen or heard of a Josephine Gum. No, I haven't heard of Margaret Young. I was living here for 15 years. I have lived there for the past two years, and there's no Jane Brown in there. James Fredericks was listed at 210 West 134th Street. A parish hall was being built there. Buildings on this site were torn down 19 years ago. The numbers jumped from 634 to 654. There is no 42 and no Gillian Hall in St. Nicholas Avenue. In New York, we found a higher proportion than in Britain of real people living at the addresses shown on the registration lists. But they still weren't Guyanese. Most of them were American citizens. Mr. Kennedy, according to my list, uh, you are the registered voter at 1315 Amsterdam Avenue, Manhattan. Are you Guyanese? Did you receive any ballot forms to cast the votes in the election? No, I haven't. Have you ever been to Guyana? No. Have you ever had any connection with Guyana never, at all? Never, never. Your husband is also this. Six at the same address. Yes, he lives here, but he died now two years ago. Your husband died two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. 605 West 110th Street, Manhattan is a luxury apartment building. The Chinese laundry next door is 601. There is a hole in the wall where 603 and Jonathan and Edith Knight should be. Another American citizen, William Babb, lives in Brooklyn. His occupation is listed as student. I am 71 years old, and I think I'm a darn old student. Is that too old to go to school now? So, I don't know if it's a joke being played or what, but if it's a joke, it's a, it's a dastard of a joke. And I'm dumbfounded. In fact, I would like this matter to be cleared up because I am very, I, I am very annoyed about it. In fact, I'm, I'm angry about it. If it's a mistake, it could be a mistake in the name, but how could there be a mistake in the name and address? So that shows that, that, that there's something um, phony about it. In New York, we found more Guyanese than in Britain, but still only four in every ten names were genuine. The conclusion was devastating when linked with the British survey results. Guyanese officially registered in the United Kingdom, number 44,300. But the fairest estimate we could arrive at as a result of our survey was 13,050. In New York, the official figure is 11,750. But our best estimate shows that less than half exists. 
we did not survey the rest of the overseas voters, who officially number 12,550. We will make the unlikely assumption that all 12,550 are correct, and even that they all voted. Officially, there are 68,600 Guyanese overseas. But our most generous total is only 30,300. On December the 16th, 36,705 overseas votes were cast in the elections. Inescapably, at least 6,445 votes were faked, and that's being excessively cautious. Almost all the 36,000 overseas in the election, 97 in every 100, went to Minister Burnham. But in the election in Guyana itself, Burnham had a of one seat. Forbes Burnham could claim the right to rule through his victory at home, but only if the election at home was fair and honest. This, the opposition dispute. Forbes Burnham didn't want us back. So he sent World in Action reporter Gus MacDonald into Georgetown unannounced. His job was to collect and sift the evidence. Last week, I found the opposition still raging with indignation. The home election, they said, had been swamped by 30,000 fake votes, proxies cast for people who couldn't make it to the polls themselves. I took a still and personally checked a string of opposition complaints. Elizabeth Wilson, for instance, cast her vote because someone used it before she got to the polling station. The same thing happened to Hubert Boudrin and his wife, Salmon Dari. They say they authorized no proxy votes, but at the polls, officials said their votes had already been cast. Simba Ganga lives in a village called Little Diamond. He claims a man called Walter Wharton stole his vote. In London, I checked my findings with the opposition leaders. One was our main organizer, who had left a proxy to, be, to vote for him because he was working in another district. And when the chap went to vote, Somebody else had voted for him. I myself found other, other um, cases in a district where I was working on, on election day. Similarly, people when they presented themselves to vote, others had voted. These peasants in my county had a different kind of problem. They weren't even listed as voters, though they wrote well before the election asking to be put in the roll. This area is strongly anti-government and 22 people in their hamlet said they were not allowed to vote. On this election, not only the registration officers who did the, 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 um, the count and made up the electoral roll, but every, almost every single person who were presiding or supervising election day were all handpicked and were PNC activists and supporters. Accusations of fraud are well documented in the villages of the Abari constituency. Hugh Erskine of the United Force lives here and he claims that at least 100 names on his local list of 600 are fake. A journalist from Georgetown checked and confirmed Erskine's findings before the election. Michael Dutch and Treble checked this area for Jagan's party and he claims 190 names are suspect. Many, in fact, are young children. Local stations polled some weird votes. John Moore voted by proxy. He was hanged 18 years ago. The overall list in Guyana increased by 20% in a four-year period. This is impossible because if one compares this with the previous period, you will find that from 1953 to 64, 11 year period, it only increased by 19%. 19 in 11 years compared to 21% increase. Now, within this overall increase, there were abnormal increases sectionally. For instance, in our stronghold, in the quarantine, there was only a 10% increase. And in Barnum's stronghold in the Mackenzie, there was a 109% increase. Balkaran Shivnath checked the proxy voting list for Campbellville and Georgetown. Out of 57 names, a full 40 don't exist. I checked three voters in Delft Street, but no one had heard of them. Jagan's candidate for Campbellville, Narbada Passad, thinks 500 votes were faked in his area alone. Most agents had no chance to check the proxies. Lists should have been before polling. They were not. The poor and the Georgetown live here in the Pams, and its inmates usually give strong support to Peter Degas' United Force. My party members have always been charitable to these people, and over the last two elections, we always got either just a majority or about at least half of their votes, maybe 250 votes out of 500. At this election, I very much doubt if we got 10 of them. 
not because they didn't want to vote for us, but because they manipulated a system whereby they couldn't vote for us. And this was done by making the warden, who was a PNC man, the polling uh, officer, the, the presiding officer. And they introduced a new system of bedside voting where the presiding officer, who was also the warden of the room, which is totally irregular, went from bed to bed and asked the people whom they're going to vote for. And a good many said the United Force, but I'm 100% put their see on the ballot and we had no means of stopping that at all. Mr. Rudy Luck uncovered some strange goings on at 53 Russell Street, Georgetown. Luck is a barrister and I have his sworn affidavit on what he found there. Only 15 people actually live here, says Luck, yet the voters roll lists 85 inhabitants. Number 53 houses a Burnham party office as well as 70 suspect voters. I left Guyana with three security men following me. My luggage vanished at Georgetown Airport, but I did bring back a thick file of documented complaints. And the dozen or so cases I checked backed up the opposition charges. My firm conclusion is that the election inside Guyana was neither free nor fair. I am charging here not only uh, the manipulation of the rigging of the voters' roll, but also manipulation of the ballot boxes. In fact, in one area we found, in the Escubo, that four wads of ballot paper wrapped around by elastic bands were found in one ballot box. And other ballot boxes had discrepancies in the number of ballots which should have been there in the boxes. The ballot boxes should have been sealed, though, should they not? Many seals were broken, tampered with. In fact, uh, the boxes were moved long distances, uh, quite a, a change from the, last, the procedure in the last election, when the votes were counted in every single constituency, in every single this time they were brought to three centers and it took hours and hours, sometimes in fact days, for boxes to be moved from areas to the center in Georgetown and New Amsterdam in a place called Sudi. That's a very alarming accusation, Mr. Degas. Do you agree with that? Well, we believe that one reason why we won the Rupununi district was because a duly appointed candidate who was a counting agent got into the plane with the ballot boxes, was ordered to leave. She happened to be a, a, a woman. She was ordered to leave, and she said, I am not leaving. If you want to throw me out, you'll have to throw me out physically. And she went to Georgetown and followed those ballot boxes right into the place where she was able to check the count. Basically, we got the right number of votes because of that. In many other circumstances, as for instance, Mackenzie, our duly appointed counting agent, was present, and he reported to me that the counting was absolutely ridiculous, that uh, maybe they count 200, 250, and then they jump, and they count 350. And he said, but you call 250. But he was alone there in the midst of a government set up, all PNC manipulated. And he said, let's have a recount. Well, when they recounted, instead of making it 350 as, as they had first counted wrongly, they add on another 50. So in the end, he gave up. He said, I just can't keep pace with it. They went on counting falsely. And although I was there as your representative, I could not stop it. May I just add a point here that many of our um, polling agents attempted to follow the boxes, but they were prevented. In one case, a ballot box uh, was moving in the opposite direction to where it should have gone. And when the chaps tried to follow it, the police stopped them and searched them and prevented them from going, pursuing the ballot box. It went in an opposite direction, and it came back to the scene about three hours afterwards. We have many examples of this kind showing how the ballot boxes could have been tampered with because of this uh, kind of procedure which was, which was adopted. What do you intend to do as an individual? Do you intend to go on being a member of the Guyan government? No, I don't. I don't intend to take a seat in a parliament, which I think is obviously a sham. You're going to waste time attempting even to create opposition to a government which is going to override it over the people.
or anything. So I personally don't intend to go in. What does the PPP intend to do about the election result? Well, uh, we are pursuing it also through the court. But as I already said, I have little confidence in this route. My idea would be to alert public opinion abroad, for instance, the Prime Minister's conference, which is now being held. House, London, where Mr. Burnham and the other Commonwealth Prime Ministers confer tomorrow. It's unlikely that the Prime Ministers will inquire into the case of Guyana's vanishing voters. If they chose to, they would not have to go far. It was in London that World in Action conducted a third survey, which proves conclusively that Chinese officials knew which of their voters in Britain were fake. Solano Laku has declared that postal votes could not get into wrong hands. If there were no house or correct addressee, the envelopes would simply go back to his high commission. But we found in most cases no forms were actually sent to the fake houses and voters. The officials responsible for sending the forms knew which were fake. And my estimation would be that if we'd had a fair election, the results would have been something like this. The United Force, in my view, would have got about the same proportion. I'm not claiming we would have won more votes. We would have got about the same proportion as we had last time, about 14%. And that would have given us 37,000 votes. Dr. Jagan, in my view, would have got 46%, a little more, 1% perhaps more than he got last time. And that would have given him 127,000 votes. And the PNC, instead of getting, according to the rigged results, 139,000, have got 110,000, about 30,000 less, at least approximately 30,000 votes cast locally and recorded for the PNC were not legal votes at all. As a Conservative, is it not perhaps preferable, in your view, that a man that you call a communist is kept out of government, Diana is kept safe and secure from intervention and strife? Isn't it better that uh, that should not happen and that perhaps one should accept the reality of a rigged election? I am opposed to communism, but I think the worst thing you can do is to give the communists a valid excuse for a violent revolution. And I can't think of a better excuse than a fraudulent election, than a partisan government, and that a government that lives it up at the expense of the people. And these excuses are being presented on a platter to the communists in Guyana. Uh, we also intend to take it to the United Nations and other, other public forum so that a world public opinion will be apprised of what is taking place in Guyana, a potential trouble spot in the world. Before the elections, Mr. Burnham told us, elections aren't really elections unless they're free. We would like him to elaborate. We have invited both Burnham and Laku to appear but they say legal complications prevent them. The invitations remain open for a future World in Action program.